What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Jesse Andelo, a.k.a. El Profe, coming at you with another video. And this time, we're doing a little bit of a product review. And in particular, we're going to be talking about a new microphone I got. And no, it is not this microphone, though I love this microphone. We'll have to talk about this later. Um, the new mic that I got is this one. Boom. The Intra Mic. Okay, the intra mic. This is specifically for saxophone and clarinet. Um, I haven't even opened it yet, so I'm gonna open it and I'm gonna give you guys my initial responses. I am not being sponsored by intra mic or by Vigo Music Tools who sells this. I just wanted to give my initial responses to all you guys out there who are maybe uh, taking some time to get ready for live shows again. You might wanna get something like this. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so here we go. Here is the intra mic. It comes in a little black box, and again, it's by Vega Music Tools. Vega Music Tools down here. Uh, orange and black seems to be their thing, so I'm down with it. It's cool. All right, open it up. And we get this nice looking pouch pretty cool ha ah, this right here this is the microphone okay the the microphone is on this end right here and that'll go into the neck of my saxophone and that'll clip onto this side right here which uh, essentially clips to the the preamp okay so there's that a um, couple more clips and a and here's a coupler okay so I bought the version that has the coupler that clips onto the neck and then it allows you to put the preamp or the little transformer idea <laughs> little transform device clearly i'm not that great with technology um on another part of your bell okay so i didn't want that guy to be on the top part of my bell i wanted it to be somewhere else and i'll show you what i'm talking about in a bit so this helps me do that and this yep this is what i thought it was this is what makes it all happen it's just like a little little pack this is probably uh part battery pack, part uh, transmitter. You can see that it's got a couple little knobs and switches. It's probably this little light right here is gonna be an indicator telling me whether it's on or off. And then this is gonna go out to my system. Plug this directly into this right here. Okay, and then go out to my system direct if I wanna do that, or I can go into my wireless rig. This whole thing, it looks very small, which I am loving. Um, I used to have some clip-on mics. Um, I had a, uh, a Shure mic, and unfortunately, a couple years back, it was stolen out of a bag that I had. The one thing that I always notice with those kind of rigs is that they almost inevitably end up feeding back, and the sound is pretty tinny, so... A system like this is gonna help alleviate that, okay? So here it all is, all laid out by Vega Music Tools, the Intramic system. Let's get into um, putting it together and how it actually sounds. All right, so I've got my uh, Barry Sax mouthpiece. I'm gonna actually be using this mostly on Barry. Um, this mouthpiece right here is a Fiowani Durga 4. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit. There you go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this all together for you guys. Um, and this is my first time. So I wanted to see how this works for me if and if it's going to work for you guys too. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to put this guy into here. Kind of goes like that. We're going to hold it. Insert the cell into the neck rubber tri-lobe in front of in the neck cable up hold the cell up with the cable along the cork and take the mouthpiece with your other hand so here we go taking the mouthpiece with the other hand okay 
insert the mouthpiece that will hold the assembly. And it tells you that you don't want to have the cable too short on the inside because it'll damage the cell. Okay, so we're going here. And then we can we come up with this little guy on this other side. I'm installing the intra mic preamp to the coupler. This bag right here, this is the coupler. It specifically says that this is not delicate. Okay, so that you can actually leave that on your neck in your case and it'll be fine. There's a little rubber strap that you can put on there to keep it on the neck. Okay, um, one end is gonna go into here, right? And another one is gonna go out um, down the body of the saxophone. So I'm gonna find this little rubber band that they're talking about. It's probably in this bag with all the other rubber bands. All right, we got big bands, small bands, long bands, shorter bands, all sorts of bands. All right, so I'm gonna take this guy right here and I'm gonna loop this around. It's pretty secure. Well, I didn't even mention before, this cable is completely flat. It is super, super flat. I don't see how it's gonna shoot out any extra air and um, I was checking out uh, what Jason Alder had to say about it. And um, Jason Alder, amazing. If you haven't checked out his stuff, Jason Alder Music, shout out to you. He said that he didn't really notice any change in the sound. The air wasn't leaking out. He didn't have to play any harder. And that's due to this cable being so flat. I mean, it's flatter than, for example, an ethernet cable, if you have any flat ethernet cables. Okay, so I'm gonna plug this guy in like this. Boom, plugs in. Pretty easily, it's nice and secure. It's not gonna really go anywhere, so I like that. Next thing is we have this guy, okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could actually put this guy straight onto um, uh, the side of your neck, right? So you don't actually have to uh, use another, another cable to trail it down. You can actually just plug directly into this guy and just have it be up here. And yes, this would go all the way down my saxophone and it would plug into the preamp up here at the top, right? And from my preamp, here's my little gain knob. And actually this little gain knob, it's got some resistance on it, um, which is great. It's pretty smooth. I appreciate that. There's some other little, um, bobs and doohickeys um, on the side. And I believe it mentioned that those were maybe like uh, high pass, low pass. It's, they affect the EQ a little bit depending on which instrument you're playing. So if you're playing a soprano, um, it's gonna be a little bit different than for me who is gonna be using this primarily on Barry. So the next part of this video is gonna be with the whole thing installed on my Barry. And I'm gonna play test it with this microphone right here and um, going directly into my little focus right and uh we'll see how it sounds all right guys so here we go i've got the re20 hooked up into logic on audio one okay i've got the intra mic hooked up into logic on audio two um and i'm using my little blue yeti microphone um just to capture my voice for the video um you might hear a little bit of fan noise. It's hot in here. It's LA. It's 100 degrees. So y'all are going to have to deal with it. Um, and I want to say that there are no preamps involved. I don't have anything other than a Focusrite uh, Scarlet 2i4. And uh, the sound is going directly into Logic. Okay. So I'm going to hit record. And then we're going to see what happens. Here we go. Thank 
guys so you're gonna notice that my background is a little bit different my clothes are different um, that's because originally I had already recorded and I had my analysis and I felt that it was a little bit too long so I'm just gonna cut straight to the chase but before I do I do want to hear your guys's comments and just see what you thought of the difference between the intra mic and the re20 now as far as my conclusion the re20 sounded brighter and had more mids than the intra mic but the intra mic in general even though it was a little bit darker had more presence up and down the range of the horn now normally uh on a dynamic microphone or like an re20 when you play in the low end the those low notes like a c a b flat and a low a are gonna spike your signal right so what a sound engineer will do is that they'll roll off that low end um, and I'm specifically talking about live setups, not so much in studio, um, but specifically in live setups, they're going to roll off your low end and maybe put some compression on that. So the, automatically they changed your sound, right? From what it is, the intro mic, I felt like it gave me the truest or a, a much truer sense of what my sound was actually like. And I didn't have to worry about any kind of peaking in the low end. And I got a really nice sound throughout the entire range. It had a lot of body, which is great. I guess the only gripe that I might have is that it didn't quite give me the same type of brightness and mids that I'm used to in this type of microphone. Um, but again, that's because I've been playing with this microphone for so many years. I'm used to what that sounds like, and I'm so accustomed to that. Um, the intro mic, because it is a truer sound, I can imagine that you could put a different kind of EQ. You wouldn't have to worry about having any kind of compression. So in that sense, if you want to save some money on those types of pedals for a live rig or you want to have a truer sound, that would work great for you. So again, intro mic is a little bit darker, a little more presence or, or a fuller presence throughout the entire range. The RE20 nice fat cutting type of sound which is great for a different kind of application all right so if you like this video go ahead and press like down below subscribe to the channel make music happen and make sure to turn on your notifications to let you know when the next video drops again i want to hear what you guys think this is jesse adelo aka el profe uh, helping you guys to make music happen Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.